the hardest part of going out on your own is making the decision to do it. Not to say that it's not challenging to run a business or to be an entrepreneur or anything like that, but the hardest part is making the decision. Once you do that, and once you said, you know what, I want to take control of my own destiny and be in charge of the way that things are run and things are done differently, make that decision and you will be well on your way. I'm a communicator by trade. I grew up in a big PR firm world. I worked for Fleshman Hillard for many years and then I moved to an ad agency to build their PR department. And then I started my own agency and the Great Recession in 2008 totally took us down. Um, I didn't think that we would survive, but what it taught me was that I didn't have to mirror or mimic a big agency because that's not what we were. We were a boutique agency. And so we, I started to look at, at that kind of stuff. Like how can I, how could I attract people in a boutique agency environment versus a, with, with those kinds of benefits, flexibility, work from home, that kind of stuff versus a big agency environment. At the same time, social media was starting to take a hold. And so we looked at the agency as a whole and we said, okay, how can we pivot the organization in order to both showcase benefits of working for a small boutique agency and how do we use the web to do that? And so fast forward, gosh, 12 years now, um, of course, we're in the middle of a global pandemic and we've had to reevaluate things once again, but it's been less, um, what's the word I want, traumatic, I guess. Um, just from the perspective of we've been able to, we because of the things that the changes that we made after the Great Recession. I started an agency in 2005, a PR firm, and have slowly evolved that into more marketing communications and professional development for communicators through Spin Sucks. Um, and <clears throat> at the same time, I have a seven-year-old who's in second grade and she's distance learning, which you'll probably hear more about. And I'm a cyclist. This is the first year I haven't raced my bicycle in probably 15 years, um, just because of the pandemic and everything that's been associated with that. So it's been a really interesting year just from a personal perspective, uh, you know, trying to, to maintain payroll and employees and all of that on top of distance learning with my my seven-year-old and not being able to race my bicycle. And I, I grew up in a PR firm. That's that's my background. Um, and we, we were in a meeting with a really large client and they were not happy, even though from a PR perspective, we had gotten really good results. They weren't happy with the results because they weren't correlated directly to sales. And I remember the time and I was all of maybe like 27 years old thinking, you know, if a client's going to spend this much money on PR, there should be a way to directly correlate that those efforts to sales. And so I started my own agency, my own business to try to figure that out. And, you know, for the first few years, we did what I knew. We did PR, we did media relations events and things like that. Um, because that's what I knew. But in the back background, I was trying to figure out now, how does all of this work correlate to a client's business objectives? And certainly as data has become more available and the web has, has widened, widened up that opportunity for us, we've been able to figure that out. And so through that entrepreneur, through my own entrepreneurial journey, I've not only figured out how the work that we do affects the growth of my own business, but how it does for the, the growth of my clients. So the business is twofold. It's been interesting. You know, I started the business as a PR firm and we did, you know, traditional PR. We did media relations and events and speaking opportunities and crisis communications and some reputation management. Um, as social media started to take a hold, we began to evolve it. And after the Great Recession um, and <laughs> having lost nearly everything from a business perspective, I, I started to look at types of things that we could do to create additional revenue streams. I wrote a couple of books. I went on the speaking tour, which I got paid for. 
Um, so those were revenue streams. We crafted some online courses, which have done extraordinarily well. We And we've built an, an online academy. So we've looked at different opportunities to help communicators evolve and pivot their careers and start to look at not only how social media has affected their, their role, but content marketing and lead generation and how to measure those efforts back to a business's objectives. There's been a lot of challenges that have not been PR or marketing specific, but more business like, how do you grow this thing? And I would say, you know, right now I'm facing this challenge where we, we have an opportunity to grow even faster and I'm reticent to do that for obvious reasons because, you know, we don't know what the next three months are hold for us. Um, but also because I don't want to scale too fast. So for me, looking at growth plans, it scares me a little bit because I don't want to have to go through laying off people if, you know, there's an, uh, the economy crashes or there's a global pandemic or, you know, whatever it happens to be, whatever the next crisis is. It's really painful to go through those things. And so taking risk, I think, is probably one of my biggest challenges. Of all you you do everything um you know in my previous roles i did one thing and i did it really well and now i'm the webmaster and the content editor and the client smoother and the hr manager and when we had an office the janitor um so you do every you do everything and you don't you don't get to specialize in one thing anymore you and get really really good at it because you wear so many different hats when i started the business i kept saying to myself if this doesn't work out you can go get a big job at an agency like a you know see senior vice president type role like big job and make lots of money and be okay and then as the years progressed i was like oh, this is actually working out. So maybe you don't have to go get a big job. And so that no longer became my fear that it wasn't going to work out. And I discovered that I could manage through things. And then my biggest fear became, what if I have to go bankrupt? And then I had a friend whose business did go bankrupt. And I discovered that it wasn't really that big of a deal. I mean, sure, it's painful, but it's not, it's not as bad as you make it in your, your own head. And then my biggest fear became, well, how do I, how do I hire and retain the right people for the kinds of work that we want to do? Because it's so forward thinking and it's so innovative for this industry that it's hard to find those, the kind of people that want to be, that want to participate in that. Today, I would say my fear is, <laughs> are we going to make it through to the end of 2020? Because this year has been awful. About, about a decade ago, I, I joined the board of an accounting firm. An accounting firm. That is not my core expertise. And the, I remember the first 18 months or so I sat in those board meetings going, I have no idea what they're saying. No clue. And so the opportunity to learn the accounting and business side of things has been incredible. And I also got to go through a sale with them. They sold to a private, they sold to a private investor and I got to go through that as well. So find a board where you don't have expertise. The business does something where you don't have expertise and learn what they do because it's going to help your business. The hardest part of going out on your own is making the decision to do it. Not to say that it's not challenging to run a business or to be an entrepreneur or anything like that, but the hardest part is making the decision. Once you do that, and once you've said, you know what, I want to take control of my own destiny and be in charge of the way that things are run and things are done differently, make that decision and you will be well on your way. And truth be told, your business is going to change 
100,000 times from the first iteration. So just make the leap because you're going to have to evolve. You're going to have to pivot. You're going to have to make change. It's okay. We all do it. And that's how you learn and that's how you grow. But if you set, if you sit there in your own head or your own cocoon and you don't make the leap, you'll never know. Branding is extraordinarily important. And the reason being is without branding, nobody knows who you are, or what you stand for. Um, one of the things that we're finding right now in our socially and politically charged world is that people, consumers, customers, prospects, they expect you to have a brand and for your brand to stand for something. Thank you viewers for watching the Founder X series by Design Hill. The best place to find me is on spinsucks.com, spinsucks.com. All of our social handles and, the, and everything are there. So it's really easy to find us.